Hello, this is Rajiv and I would like to welcome you for a new presentation on IBM Information Server 11.7 architecture. So I have got multiple requests from a lot of you that we need to have this presentation and finally I said, okay, let's make it happen. So before we get started, let's just say thank you for a couple of different groups and organizations. I must acknowledge that all the architecture diagrams that have been used in this presentation, they belong to IBM, Kubernetes, or Docker. The technologies are owned by IBM, Docker, and Kubernetes. And PR3 Systems is in the business of training, consulting, and reselling IBM Information Server software. And we are very grateful to IBM and its employees who have really helped us to serve the community in the best possible way. So let's get started. So what is the difference between 11.7 and 11.5? So there are a lot of differences and on IBM site, there's a full list. But for a person like us who has been using information server for the past 10 to 15 years, the biggest change that I saw was the introduction of a completely new component called Information Server Enterprise Search. And this component resides on a different server and it's based upon new technologies called Docker and Kubernetes that we'll be talking about in this presentation. Then we also have new enhanced interfaces for information governance. So there's a new information governance catalog and in a new information governance monitor user interface, which did not exist in 11.5. Then there's also a data stage flow designer. It's web-based ETL. And so that has got some of the features of data stage thick land and talking to product management looks like they will be moving some more functionality to the web-based ETL tool in the coming releases. And there are more connectivity options. So let's look at the architecture diagram of IIS 11.7. So at the top, as you can see that you've got different user interfaces so the analysis interface is analysis interface for information analyzer, thick client, also known as the workbench. And the development interface is for data stage and quality stage client. And the web administrative interface is for the web console and also for all the web-based clients like which are IMAM, which is information metadata asset manager, information analyzer, thin client, then data quality console. So there are a lot of options like that. Now they use a lot of services like the metadata services, the unified service deployment, security services, and logging and reporting services. All of these are provided by the WebSphere application server. Then as we go down further, we've got unified parallel processing. Information Server has got a dynamic parallel processing engine in which the degree of parallel processing, whether you've got four sets of parallel processes or 10 sets of parallel processes that can change at runtime. So if you design a job in a symmetric multiprocessing system, you can run it in a clustered environment just by changing the configuration file. And that's pretty powerful. And then the box on the right of it is the unified metadata, which gives us all the metadata management capabilities. So it, you could have the metadata that is dis, defined at design time, what kind of columns you have, what are the data types. You can also have dynamic metadata. So for example, at runtime, you can use an external file, which gives you the schema, or you can, the data itself has changed in the database and at runtime your metadata has changed. All of that is captured. 
and then you also have operational metadata so in addition to design time metadata you also capture num the number of rows that were processed the number of rows that were dropped all of that information is captured in the unified metadata and that information resides in the metadata repository and then we have got common connectivity with all sorts of different data sources so we've got structured uh, connectivity that you can connect to any kind of a database or a file then you can connect to mainframe vsam files you can connect to applications like sap and then you can also connect to unstructured data sources so this is the architecture diagram of information server 11.7 now before we go to the architecture diagram of enterprise search we need to define a couple of terms so let's define what is docker enterprise search uses a containerization technology called docker so what is a container a container is a stand alone module which encapsulates services that run within it so the containers allow the services to run in an identical way irrespective of the host operating system or the hardware the second definition that we need to discuss is kubernetes what is kubernetes it's an open source system for container orchestration and clustering and we'll see very soon how it works the third definition is a pod what exactly is a pod the pod is a basic building block of kubernetes so what happens is that a service runs within a container and one or more container run within a pod so that's how Kubernetes pods uses Docker containers in enterprise search. As I discussed earlier, Kubernetes is used for container orchestration and clustering. So whenever you have got container or orchestration and clustering, you need to have the concept of master and non-master nodes. So what is a master node? A node that is designated as the master that controls all the other nodes in the cluster you got three processes run running in the master node in the non master node we have got two processes running kubelet and the kube proxy and they perform within the non master node are all the pods which contain the containers which contain the services so i know that this is a pretty vast topic of docker and kubernetes i am not an expert in this and i'm just trying to explain it so that you have got a better understanding of the enterprise search architecture so this is a diagram that i got from kubernetes documentation so if you look over here you have got this node which is in the center is called the master node and then these are all the non master nodes and within each non master node as you can see you have got the kubelet process running which communicates with the master and then you've got the docker processes running the docker can contain all the containers okay. let's go further so this is a pod a pod can contain different containers so as you can see this green boxes these are containerized apps so you've got these are containers in which you've got microservices running and wherever you see this database symbol that's a volume container which means you can access the database or the disk volumes and within each pod you can see you've got volumes as well as app containers and there's also an ip address within kubernetes you have got an internal networking and internal ip addresses and there's also an internal dns so these ip addresses allow you allow the pods to talk to each other 
these IP addresses are different from the IP address of the actual host. So never get confused on that. And when you actually install Information Server Enterprise Search, it will ask you for the range of internal IP addresses. So that's one of the configuration parameters that you pass in while installing Enterprise Search. So with this brief overview of Kubernetes and Docker, let's go to Enterprise Search. So this is the architecture diagram of Enterprise Search 11.7. At the top level, you can see ingress. What does ingress do? Ingress is a kind of a reverse proxy. So you get requests into the enterprise search which come to ingress and based upon the request, it can get routed to the right pod, to the right container, to the right microservice to get response. And then once you get the response, it sends back the response. So ingress is how the communication comes in. It's a kind of a reverse proxy process. Then we talked about microservices which run within the containers. So we have got two types of microservices. These are the microservices, the second layer. These are the microservices which have been created by information server developers. They use all the information server components. And these microservices can also use third party microservices which are available as an open source, like Cassandra, and you've got other ones like Kafka, all of these are third party microservices, which you get used by the information service or microservices. Okay. And then at the lower level, we have got Kubernetes control plane, which allows you to control all the different pad, parts, which will, and the parts contain all the different containers. And the right hand side, we've got monitoring where you can monitor all the different processes. ELK stands for Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. Kibana is used for visualization and Logstash is used for backend processing and Elasticsearch is used for search. And then you've got cluster storage, which allows you to connect to all the volume. All the storage is managed by the cluster storage. And I was talking about those IP addresses which are internal. That is done in the cluster networking box over here. And they all use the Docker containers which are at the lower level and the Docker containers reside on the operating system. So this is a broad overview of Enterprise Search 11.7 architecture. I know that this is very brief and it might not become, it might not be very clear by now. So we have got two more slides to make it even more clearer for you. And I hope that by the time the presentation ends, you do have a clear understanding of the architecture diagram of Enterprise Search 11.7. So let's look at this diagram. As I said earlier, your request comes into Ingress, which is a reverse proxy, and the request can either go to the core information services interfaces and services, or it can go to enterprise search. So these are two different sets of services. The enterprise search interfaces, they reside on the enterprise search host, which is a different machine than the services host. Services host is where the information server is running and the enterprise search host is where the enterprise search processes are running. They both use the same metadata repository database, which is running on the host where the repository is based out. And both of these interfaces and services, they use some shared services which are residing on the enterprise search host. So for example, your Cassandra, Kafka, that can be used by both of them. Okay. Now this is the third architecture diagram. Now, what does this diagram talk about? Let's go in detail. So within this box at the top level, you see that this is the enterprise search host. So everything is this, all of these processes are running within the enterprise search host. And then we are talking about the Kubernetes cluster. So Kubernetes cluster has got all of these different parts, which are all running with different containers. 
and each container has got multiple different microservices. So what are the different types of microservices? So the UI microservices are accessed through the user interface and API microservices are used as an API by the application and internal microservices are used by the services which are there within the cluster. They don't get called directly from outside the enterprise search host. And storage microservices are used to access the storage. So Cassandra can be used for accessing the graph database. Kafka can be used for accessing the messaging. Solar is used for indexing. And Zookeeper is used for configuration management. Then you've got internal microservices. The first one is enterprise search scheduler, enterprise search type registry, enterprise search even consumer machine learning, social search bridge. All of these are microservices. The way you configure them is by using a file called the YAML file, which has got an extension of YAML. So all the logic that you have got within the service is defined within the YAML file. And then you have got API microservices like enterprise search, catalog search, application configuration, user preferences, social and audit trail. And then you've got user interface microservices which get directly called by the user interface. Those are the enterprise search, information governance catalog, new and monitoring. And they all use the same logging and monitoring microservices. Okay, so that's in brief the architecture diagram of Enterprise Search 11.7. If you have any questions about information server architecture or enterprise search architecture, please leave a comment below. I truly appreciate your time. In the subsequent modules, we'll be talking about exactly how to show these different processes. So I'll be posting that very soon. So thank you very much for your time. To get the latest training videos, please subscribe to our channel. And we have just created a brand new course for data governance called the Data Governance Accelerator. So doing my data governance projects, I found that there was no training available which covered not only the data governance, but also covered all the basics of IBM tools which help in data governance like information analyzer, quality stage, and in information governance catalog. So that's why we created this course called Information Governance Accelerator, which covers all of those different components in one course. And to, for you to have a sneak preview of this course, I've created a free course called Seven Days to Data Governance Mastery. And you can register to that course using the link given below. Thank you very much for your time and look forward to seeing you very soon. Till that time, have an awesome day.